hi guys welcome back to my channel if you're new here my name is Adriel and if you're a returning subscriber welcome back it feels like I haven't been here forever and it's just been one week like just one week I had exams and so I just decided to focus because that's why I'm in Australia anyhow um, I'm just going to get right into it um, if you haven't already subscribed please subscribe to this small green channel um, every like matters so that other people can actually see my video other people are interested in this type of videos also I feel like it's dark and that's because I've still not gotten my lights because I've been busy <laughs> and uh, when I wanted to film this particular video I was like okay the lighting has to be great you know I don't want a dark video today there was a glimpse of sunshine because it's winter in Australia and it's been raining for a bit and the weather as you can see is a bit shitty <laughs> so at some point of the video i'm pretty sure that the sunshine is going to come back because it was really bright at some point for off and on like three four times and i'm like you know what i'm going to seize this opportunity and i'm going to film a video but now the sun has gone so i'm just going to work with it because i'm already here i put makeup on my face this video has to go <laughs> So anyhow, today I'm going to be talking about what I wish I knew before coming to Australia. So the I already I know that I have a video about what I wish I knew about Australia before coming and it was very generalized. So I'm gonna be doing a series. Um so I'm gonna be picking one topic and I'm going to be talking about that topic. So I don't wanna say industry because I'm not just going to be specializing on like one thing. Of one industry but today i'm going to be talking about skills what i wish i knew before coming to australia about skills and i'm going to be looking at it from two different aspects i'm going to be talking about skills as well like handwork and then i'm also going to be talking about skills in, in your career so professional wise what you need to have and what you need to know so stick around and let's do this video <laughs> what skills do you need to have i'm going to be talking about you know skills the works of your hands the talent you know that thing that you're talented you know in no, i'm not just going to say talent or just talent anyways i'm just going to say you know things that you can also learn that you can make money from because i'm all about making extra cash i'm all about making um money honestly i think that the work of your hand is actually the easiest way to actually make money that is not regulated not regulated in a sense that you know it's the work of your hand you're not paying for any other thing or let maybe that particular skill requires you to buy materials but like you detect how much you're going to they detect how much you're going to um what's it called spend or how much you're going to charge people so i'm going to start with the women first women i know this because you know i like to make my hair i like to wear braids I like to wear wigs, you know, but to braid your hair is actually so, 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 so expensive. It's so expensive. Like, forget that. Okay. It shouldn't be so much because you're earning in dollars, but still yet, it's even still expensive in dollars because I want to say why am I paying, you know, almost to $50 to make my hair, but I understand. I understand because it takes you like what it's eight to nine hours if you're braiding your hair i'm talking about braids now so i understand that um if they're going to use say the pricing system in australia where you charge by the hour you know you're going to actually want to put it that way so say if you charge twenty dollars per hour um twenty dollars per hour just say you know rough sketch so if you say you're charging twenty dollars per hour and then you're going to do ten, um, 10 hours that's about what that's about two hundred dollars and then you know buying the attachment for the hair of course that's already racked out um, another amount of money also while doing this video before i digress um, i'm trying to make this video as short as possible because i actually saw a comment of someone saying that you know the videos are usually long and coming from someone that doesn't even like watching long videos normally I, I get the drift and I get I, I feel you I feel you I hope you know that I feel you I know where you're coming from from one YouTube watcher viewer to another so I, I understand and I'm going to try to make this video pretty short and simple and straightforward without my extra stories because if you leave me I will digress I'm one of those people that once I start talking I put like five ten different stories into one message that I'm supposed to send out 
and then a five minutes conversation has extended to 10. You get it? Anyhow, but what I was saying about the braids, so I understand why they are charging that much because now they are charging you using the payment system here, using um, the payment margins here, and that's why it's expensive, but it's still expensive. You know, I'm just being the lot of that I am. It's expensive. So sometimes, like, I want to braid my hair and I'm thinking twice that, so I have to go and look for $250 now to make my hair, you know, inclusive of attachment anyways. And I, I realized that for men, barbing the hair is actually not as expensive. It's pretty cheap. Someone told me like $50 you can barb your hair. $50 in Naira is... I think almost about 70k depending on what the exchange rate is saying meanwhile 250 dollars at the moment is almost a hundred k it's almost like what i think it's almost like 90 something or 80 something thousand naira to braid my hair but not looking at the money you know i said in one of my videos that um try not to convert you know money your, your dollars to naira i get i get i'm contradicting myself but there are some things that it will just happen. The calculation will happen even without you trying to calculate it by like by yourself because you know how much you would have paid wherever you're from to you know to, to make the braid. So you're just like 250, 250, 250. Ha! Oh my god. <laughs> you know, and I know how to braid my hair. I know how to uh, I don't know how to braid braid. I don't think it will be neat if I braid my hair myself. So of course I have to go and meet somebody else to braid my hair for me. But I know how to make wigs, which is pretty important. It's a good skill to know. And your skill can be it could be making making food. Like the people that sell food, eh? Nigerian food. I, I don't know where you know many people are because I saw someone in the comment section saying you know Kenya and stuff. But like I see. I'm going to I'm always going to refer back to Nigeria because that's where I'm from and you know it's more relatable for me to compare prices with Nigeria or compare situations with Nigeria because I'm familiar with that environment. But I don't I can't remember trying to what's it called? I was trying to do my birthday. I was trying to do my birthday um in February and I was just like, Oh, I don't want to cook. I want to get someone to cook for me, so I'm trying to find out how much a tray of jollof rice is nigerian jollof by the way and when they told me the price i said how much is rice <laughs> how much is tomatoes <clears throat> and my friends are like oh no it's your birthday you know don't worry like you're not supposed to cook get some but i'm like if you don't blend that tomatoes for me like you better let me blend that tomatoes and make my jollof rice myself i will come and pay how much for a tray how much is rice? How much is tomatoes and woolies? Tomatoes and pepper. I will make the jello rice. You will eat it and everybody will be happy. <laughs> Cause I'm just like, nah. But that's someone's business. That's someone's skill. I might not be their target market, but somebody else is. I know people that steadily buy food. They buy soup, chicken. The, the things that you feel like, ah, it's just you. You should be able to make it to yourself. I know people that buy it, you know. So, because I'm not that person's target market, doesn't mean somebody else isn't. And people are catching up from this, you know, food business. See, let me know if you like tea. Australia, um, Nigerians in Australia. Other than, you know, catching up from work. I'm all, see, side hustles pay. And um, I like to have multiple income. Some people understand that, you know, having a skill is really not for them and it's not their forte. And see, I'm not stressing. I know it's not, it's not for everybody. Some people are 95, some people are entrepreneur and some people are, you know, combination of both. But I'm saying that if you do have a skill, even if, you know, you feel like, oh, well, I don't want to. Maybe you should look into trying to develop it before coming or even if you're here, just try, you know, watching youtube videos to try and see how you can monetize that your skill because people <laughs> people are cashing cashing out because sometimes it's not every time you want to do two jobs case example me you know two jobs is good you know double income but i remember working and when my hours it seemed like my hours are going and i was tired i told my team leader i'm like i'm tired please i want to go home because i've been here since 8 a.m and it is what it's 7 p.m i want to go home i'm tired you know because people are different i would find comfort in you know maybe 
working with my skills that you know um working in an organization that's my preference but um the purpose of this video is to kind of encourage you to find what you're good at if you do have something that you're good at even if it's bad being hair i know a lot of guys that um would rather go for skodo skodo is like <coughs> I want to say it's like Grimakwa, but Grimakwa is the same thing. But anyhow, um, it's like bald, like, you know, bobbing your hair all bald and everything. And they would rather do that than take their, um, then take themselves to like, you know, a barbing saloon and try to cut it because, you know, they have, what do guys call that thing? I don't know. I can't remember. I'll probably put it at the bottom, but like, you know, they, they are loyal to their Nigerian babas or whatever with bobbing their hair wherever they were. So, you know, they're just scared to try someone else so that they don't mess up their airlines or just mess up their hair in general. And I know someone that would also leave his hair like super like full because he's also scared to go to a baba. And then once they find one person that is like really good, they all kind of go there. And I don't think babbing is so hard. Okay, maybe I shouldn't say that because I'm not in the field. So let me not say that because it's easy to you know mess up someone's hair so i would take back my comments and just say that you know if you're good <laughs> with babbing hair see come and make money there's there's i think the thing i like about australia is that there are opportunities whether you decide to follow career path or like your handwork there's always a way to kind of make money there's there's no money on the road though there's no money on the floor you have to work hard for your money you have to you have to work hard. If you are not ready to work hard, then my friend, go back to Nigeria and go and sleep. Or, you know, because I can't say go back to your house in Australia and go and sleep because you have to pay rent. <laughs> but, like, if you are not ready to work hard and go back. So, I'm going to also try and move into the career um, career aspect because I'm also trying to, like I said, make this video short, as short as possible. Career wise, if you are, you know, you're not, you're, you don't have skills you <laughs> know you can't work with your hands or anything i would suggest that you try to build yourself in whatever career that you're in try certifications one thing i know about australia is that they appreciate when you are well learned so if you have um if you are very vast in your skill sets in your um in your career path you know it would really help you it would make your employer you know um what's the word now but it will make your employer um, appreciate you more and you're more valuable to your employer because you know you're not the only person trying to buy for a role you're not trying to you're not the only person trying to apply for a role there are other people that are applying and you need to have an edge over somebody else so having um grown skills in your field helps you so that extra certification that you think that oh nah it might it doesn't really work like you know i have an i have i have what's it called a bsc a ba i have an msc you know that should be fine now still get that certification the, me i'm of the opinion that you know no knowledge can be wasted so even if you feel like you're not going to use it now it will still be handy sometime like in the future so get that like get that education get that certificate get there are so many programs you know there are some that even um the nsw government which is where i am if you go to their sites they have free free seminars you know just um learning and development tools to be able to grow you in different fields so that you can you know help boost your career basically once you have those certificates i'm not saying that oh, once you have those certificates you get a job immediately please don't get me wrong don't don't go and quote me wrongly don't <laughs> don't quote me wrongly but i'm just saying that it gives you an edge with your current or future um employer and you know if you're also trying to vie for pr a lot of employers sponsor um sponsor people here so like see don't give them a chance to say well you know this person doesn't even have it so they, what's the point you know give them every option every opportunity to say oh this person is a good person and i really don't want to um is a good asset to the company and i really don't want to lose this person you know and i don't mind um applying for pr on behalf of this person so yeah um other skills you can do cooking making hair i think those are the two major ones that people do see even making big things so um what they call those things necklaces i want not gold necklace now all those bead ones all those african ones because those kind of things sell market so we have good see now i'm looking like 
during my undergraduate i did um a vocational course because by the time i got to my third year it was compulsory for you to do vocational course because they wanted you to have um some other type of knowledge and i took it seriously for like a minute <laughs> but like i didn't really take it as serious as i should have and now i wouldn't say i'm regretting it i like to live a life of no regrets and i try to try as much as possible to be able to accept my choices or the choices that i have made but that vocational course that tailoring you know class i wish i actually paid attention funny thing is my sister is actually a fashion designer and i could have learned but did i learn no oh, strong head my head i'm too I, oh no nah. but now eh see i'm going to go and buy a machine because that one that one is I like that one. I'm going to go and get a machine and go learn how to sew because tailors are cashing out. Cashing out. So tailoring side hustle while you know doing your other stuff. And I the thing I like about this field is that it's not just for women. It's not just young, it's not just um not only women can cook, but men and women. If cooking is your passion, yes, I don't even know why you're coming to Australia. If you know how to cook, if in your house they are calling you chef something i suggest that maybe you should come and do uh what's it called you come and be a chef in australia because chef people they are giving their pr so <laughs> one to one to you know what to do <laughs> but like it um tailoring barbing um if cooking their skills though their skills they're, they're really good skills um people that know how to make you know say ankara bags because all these things it kind of intrigues people here especially people that miss home sometimes you know you want to eat somebody else's food it tastes of home so you buy food from someone else sometimes you know you just want to go to church and wear your african wear or they are doing african sunday like they do in my church you know you wear your african clothes some days you know you want to look fly it's not everyday dashiki some days you know give them mini skirts try give them ankara blazer you know give them corporate high waist ankara trouser and the rest but you can't do that because you know you're trying to buy it from somebody else and somebody wanted to sell crop top crop top for for 70 dollars it's not food top oh it's crop top see i'm not even trying to i'm not trying to spoil anybody's business now this one it was even um online i saw this one online and i was trying to buy it. and it was 70 dollars come on i was trying to even buy another dress and it was over a hundred and something dollars to buy a dress and i get it i get the sewing i get the sourcing you know bringing your fabrics i understand it which is why i'm not putting anybody down hustle now hustle is everybody's business do you get whatever price you want to put on it you can put on it like I always say, I might not be your target market, but there are so many other people that would not mind. $150 might not, it might not, it might not feel like a lot for some people and they will buy it, you know, without blinking. So my girl, my guys, if you have a skill, harness it to bring it out of that, that place that you have hidden it, you know, dust, dust out the, the whatever and come out if you sew machine bring your sewing machine out and sew there's money to be made i'm like i don't like it when i like you have a skill and then you're hiding it see why are you hiding your skill now why why are you hiding this talent from the world so you can make money you know doing the regular 95 you can make money on the side you know on the side <laughs> side hustle and uh, one of the ways to know what to do, what actually, you know, how to meet people, because I know that for for one, the major problem might be, um, how am I going to meet people? How am I going to know who wants to buy? What if no one buys? See, when I first came to Australia, I wouldn't say that I made it a point of mind to kind of segregate myself. No, I'm just, I might seem outgoing sometimes, but I'm not. I'm only like really hey hippie yo yo when i'm with my friends and sometimes it's a bit annoying but like annoying for me anyways this is because like so you need to associate yourself with other people i'm not saying go and farm people or you know be a baby too or just be that person that's everywhere you know try to talk to people once i started talking to people mine was church 
I started talking to people in church because I was active in church. I started getting information that I did not get before or I did not know before. And I'm like, oh, so this is common knowledge. Oh, you know, I started talking to people in church. I found out the person that was cooking food, someone that is making snacks. So the person that is cooking soups and rice and everything is not even the same person that is making meat pie and sausage roll, egg roll, you know different people dipping their hands in different things there's somebody else that is selling you know african Af african items so food not just african food i'll say nigerian food so that's another so that's somebody else's field do you get i started finding out that you know everybody has their business you know there's so many things and then my church decided to do this thing with the youth whereby you know um we sat like everyone was at a round table and we started talking about what we're doing what we're interested in and there were so many ideas so many people doing great and wonderful things in australia and i'm just like you know i knew that oh, these businesses were there but like you know i never even knew that you know the people doing these businesses are in my church so tap into it and it's not just you know side hustle gigs um, connecting with people helps you also with job applications sometimes some companies will be hiring but you wouldn't even know because they haven't like they won't put it out on the usual places it's like you know seek and indeed instead like maybe I don't know there was one that I saw that someone sent anyway to the group that I was in and it was they just pasted it in their office how would you know they're employing if not that someone inside that company would tell you that oh this company is employing you know and then you know and one good thing is that once you have somebody working there that person can refer you and if that person refers you you have you know twice as much opportunity to get an interview other than just applying on your own so mix mix up mix with people you get information you would you know exchange information you gain more things if you know something you tell them no man is an island you have to mix and associate with people i understand that not everybody's like that because even me myself i'm not like that on most days i'm more comfortable with the people that i know like my people around my circle it's really hard for me to be in a room and start conversing with everybody but you know slowly and surely you are getting there <laughs> So I hope and I wish everybody has been able to benefit something from this video. I hope this video has been helpful in general. Please do not forget to like this video if you found this video helpful. Um, while you're down there, click on the notification bell so that you can be notified when I post and upload a new video. Um, do not also forget to subscribe. Subscribe. I hope you see out and subscribe. Thank you, thank you for staying to the end of this video. See you in my next one. Bye.